Did you know that the Order of the Arrow is a camper's honor society? Hey, Scatter Stan. Let's talk a little bit about the Honor Society for Campers, known as the Order of the Arrow. This is something we need to pr promote within the unit, okay, in a troop or a crew. This is something we need to promote. Now, back, a while back, I did a training site. I'm going to put it up. Don't go there now. Go there at the end. This, that, those things are up there the whole time. Do you know that? It's all the time. They're up there. So I'm going to put it up there, a little eye. Go up there later on and look at the planning seminar. Okay, that way you'll understand what I'm talking about. We need to promote camping, going out, doing stuff. We need to put the out and scout. Okay, we need to do that. Um, I might put that on the list too. There's a whole list of stuff. But as an arrowman, Okay, as somebody who's involved in scouting, adult leaders, youth, we need to camp. We need to go out. We need to do camping. We need to sleep in a tent, all right, <laughs> or a cabin, depending on the weather. So that's something we're going to talk about today. Now, here are some things to keep in mind when developing a schedule of camping. There are do's and don'ts, and we'll go back and forth, okay? <laughs> so here's a do. Every unit needs a camping opportunity of some kind every single month. Now, I know for you that live up north, that's going to be difficult because up north it gets rather cold. Cabin camping is fine in cold weather, okay? That's fine. That's something that needs to be done. There has to be an opportunity. Uh, I remember living in the Chicago area my troop went up to Wisconsin. Now, it's cold in, in January, okay? It's really cold. Uh, we slept in igloos, okay? That was our a big event. I've actually slept a night in an igloo. Not many people could say that, that live in Florida, okay? <laughs> so, uh, I can't, because that was the opportunity that my troop gave me. We went up there and camped. I think it got down to 50 below zero. I mean, it was cold and windy. So, But in an igloo, if you do it right, sleep the whole night. Won't bother you at all. Now, when you're planning these things, you, want, you do want to make sure that the calendar in your area, your district, your council, they have activities too. So you want to include that with that monthly goal of having some type of camping or outing every single month. Now keep this in mind. The OA is not a camping opportunity for everyone. So that's that's something to keep in mind. Do not include their schedule. Now they might have four or five activities every single year. You don't want to incorporate that because that's usually just the airmen are, are involved in that. And not everybody in the troop is qualified, elected, and done our deal. So, you know, that's something to keep in mind. You don't want to exclude anyone. Now, here's something you don't want to do. You don't want to develop a calendar and then repeat it year after year. Make a rule that no 24 months have to pass before you do another event. So none of that, you want to make sure that no activity is repeated over and over. I know it's tempting. It's tempting to redo that same thing over and over again. Try to avoid it. Give it at least two years between those activities. Write everything down. That way, if you're not there, somebody else can use your notes so that you can do that event again. So these are things you got to plan ahead. You got to be prepared. You want to do summer camp every year. You need to have that on the schedule. Some units like to go and make it a big adventure out of state, go somewhere um, and, and have a lot of traveling and all that stuff. It can be expensive, okay? <laughs> Keep that in mind. Uh, you, you want to do an adventure, make it a big deal. That's great. 
sometimes it's just not financially wise to do that. So you have to go local and that's a lot less travel, but you can make a big adventure of that too. So summer camp should be affordable and a lot of units are starting to do one big trek out of state and do all that stuff and one year they'll be local. So they'll go back and forth, you know, and uh, that's great. That's great. In fact, some of the larger units even split it up. So the new scouts, the, the brand new scouts who just started scouting, they might go to the local camp and have a contingent from their unit at summer camp locally. Then the older scouts, the ones that want to go whitewater rafting or climbing mountains in New Mexico or whatever, they can go and do the big trips. Okay, So that's, that's an option. You need to think about those options, but you have to do some kind of summer camp every single year. And that does count as one of your months. <laughs> okay, It does count. Now here's a don't. Don't call off camping because of bad weather. Now there are some exceptions. If there's a hurricane coming or there's tornadoes or there's there's uh, there's something significant going on like a forest fire or an earthquake or something, obviously don't. But if it's just raining and it's going to be icky, <laughs> there's no need to call off camping. Camping is fun even when it rains. You know, I often tell people, do you know what scout leaders do when it rains? They get wet. Yeah. And a lot of times the younger the younger scouts it's the camp out they remember the most. How wet they were or how cold they were. You know, all of the adverse things is it's amazing, but it always ends up being a positive thing. So don't call it off because you see rain clouds or you hear the weatherman come up with some phony baloney about the weather coming weeks from now. Don't call it off because of bad weather. Now here's another one that's really popular. It's called a survival weekend or a shoebox camp out. These are enormously popular. And uh, if you do one of these, uh, like every other year you could have one, um, you want to make sure that you're including the entire group. There's scouts that just started, there's scouts that are in the middle, and there's scouts that are way advanced. Okay, so <laughs> have all these different levels and skill levels. Survival weekends can be broken up into different groups, okay? You can have smaller groups go and do these things. As long as you have the two deep leadership that's there, uh, you can definitely break them up into groups. So with a survival weekend or a shoebox camp out, as a lot of the scouts have called it, the, the survival weekend is basically they go with the bare minimum and very uh, small rations of food and they go out and they do a survival camp out. That's, that's a great idea for the uh, middle of the road scouts that have some skills that want to fine tune them a little bit and then the advanced scouts. Um, the advanced scouts, they want to go out and do that shoebox one where they can only take the equipment they can put in a shoebox, a normal shoebox. So uh, that's one of those things that they love to go and do. And that's a lot of fun. Creates tons of memories. Tons of memories. I did one on an island in the middle of, it was a spoils island in the middle of this river. I think it was the Indian River or something like that. Anyways, we were on this island and the older boys went off and did their survival thing. And they had a great old time. Lots of stories and all the great things they did, it was just amazing. They had an amazing time. The younger ones, on the other hand, we got to teach them some skills. We taught to teach them how to build a fire. We taught them some um, uh, whittling chip, or not whittling chip, the um, totem chip. We taught them that, okay? We taught them the axes and all that stuff. We taught them a bunch of skills that they needed to know so that they could someday do this survival weekend. So that's a great idea put that on the schedule, okay? Everybody in the unit 
can do something like that. There's different skill levels, and you can break them up so that you have the too deep leadership and you have safety in mind and all those things. They need these experiences, and that's one of the critical things. Make sure you put that on every year. Do a different place each year. Don't do the same place because it's not really teaching the survival part. You know, you want to make sure you keep it mixed up a little bit. Now, on high adventure, you do not or don't count that as one of the camping opportunities for the month. Very simply put, it's usually a contingent, a small contingent from your unit that's going off to uh, sea base or they're going off to film on or they're in contingents for any of the high adventure stuff that's out there. It's not the whole group because it's usually age, there's age requirements and there's health requirements. So not all of your youth and adults are going to be doing that. So you can't count that as the camping event for the month, okay? You want to make sure that you, as, as OA members, you want to encourage local camping. Go somewhere local with a group. That's the thing we need to encourage. So don't try to count your high adventure stuff as your monthly activity. Now, as OA members, as you know, we're trying to promote camping. There's a camping requirement in order to get into the OA. So as OA members, we need to promote this camping. And one of the big things we need to promote with camping is cooking at camp. Make sure you do have an opportunity for scouts to participate in some kind of cooking competition. Scouts love competitions and they love to eat. Believe me, a scout is hungry. <laughs> that is one of the things. Uh, they love this stuff. You can come up with an Iron Chef idea that they have to go out and get the food for some kind of exotic meal that has to include papaya okay or a can of spam okay <laughs> There's, you can give them these mystery ingredients that they have to include in that meal that's one option you could do things where you give them certain items and they have to use all those items so that could be the competition uh, you can do all kinds of things but you want to encourage scouts to do camp cooking and that's true for in the morning and in the evening. At lunchtime, they usually want to get something and go. Okay, if it's if it's in their hands like a sandwich or something like that, that that helps keep their calories up so they can do the activities. But you want to make sure that when it's time to be in camp, to really cook, use a stove, use the fire, use these things, use. Um, cast iron equipment that that you drag to all these campouts okay make sure you have an opportunity for them to learn and to compete and to do fun things with cooking that'll keep them coming back believe me i've i've had things that they came out of a camp that were they didn't look right but man were they tasty <laughs> the, the low lighting around the campfire really helped but you know that's the neat thing about cooking in camp now there's some of the do's and don'ts as OA members as honored camper society that we are we need to promote camping at least have an opportunity every single month that's important now with the district calendar and the council calendar you're going to fill up about half of that right off the bat, hopefully. The rest of that is up to you to plan and put together. So that is important. You're an OA member, okay? Promote camping. Promote fun during camping, okay? Cooking is a good way to do it. Sitting around the campfire, uh, telling jokes, doing fun stuff. There's so many smiles and memories and, and wonderful things that happen within scouting. And I, I want you to encourage that. You are an OA brother. Do that. That's kind of your charge. You want to make sure that you kind of encourage your fellow scouts and scouters to camp at least or have an opportunity every single month. Now also, 
You want to keep it fun. So let's do the scouter's joke of the week. What do you get when you cross a polar bear with a seal? A well-fed polar bear. <laughs>